Next up, what are the different types of podcasts and how might they best suit your work? So interviewing is a popular form of podcasting and there is a lot of great information out there about how to interview as a podcaster and you can really dive into a bunch of different styles and structures. Um, there's different styles that you can take from such things as research and research interviewing as well as journalistic or media interviewing. Um, so there's formal, conversational, ethnographic, traditional, and all these different styles can have an effect on how your interviews turn out, what kind of information you want to gather from your interviewee, from your guest, um, how the feel of the podcast, uh, if you want it to be really relaxed, you're probably not going to want a very formal interview, and if you want it to be a very tight uh, structured interview, then it's it's going to be a lot different. So um, it can be unstructured, which would mean that you may not have any questions. You could go into an interview very, very open-ended, semi-structured, maybe you have an outline, or very structured where you have a set of questions that you have to go through. And sometimes maybe you're not allowed to ask questions outside of that, depending on where your guest um, is coming from or the restrictions that they may have. So uh, if you listen to any, any music therapy podcast, Music Therapy Chronicles, um, Creative Therapy Umbrella, Make More Music, there are tons of music therapy podcasts that do interviewing styles. And you can hear even how different everybody's style is as an interviewer, even if they use some of these same elements. Um, and there's also a lot of great popular interview style um, podcasts as well that are um, all different types. So. Yeah. <laughs> Do that. A lot of what you're talking about with these styles of interviewing is stuff that, um, you know, that I teach in our research classes and, and that I think is important when people want to do qualitative research, you know, they have to think about their interview style. Um, and one of the ways that I usually start teaching is by, by, um, how you don't want to interview. And usually what I end up showing people is I'll either show them like there's an old SNL skit with Chris Farley where he just has these amazingly huge stars on and he'll just, so like Paul McCartney will be the guest host on, on Saturday Night Live and Chris Farley would sit there. This is like in the 90s, but you can find them online and he'll just go, so, so you're in the Beatles. That was, that was probably pretty cool, huh? <laughs> So that would be an example of not a great interview question because Paul McCartney would be like, yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, leading questions like that. Or, uh, or I'll show them like any random sports interview too where it's just like, so you just hit a home run and you finished out the game. So talk about how great that felt. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you have to give them you have to give them somewhere to go with these these interviews. And so the more podcast interviews I think you can listen to, the more you can the more you can start thinking, yeah, that, there was a question that worked. There's a question that got something that was really interesting to me as a listener. So how could I ask that question in a certain way? And that's what I did for, for a lot of our education podcasts. Because what I was saying before about the um, music therapy research blog is that research can be over here sometimes. Research as this um, high and mighty thing and it's only the PhDs that can do it and everything. And we wanted to make it relatable. So how do you do that? How do you bridge that divide. And so one of the ways that, that you can do it is to try to create your education podcast so that you're, you're um, really asking a question, not that you're playing dumb, but you're just trying to ask a question in a different way of like, so what does that really mean? How did you, like, what were the hard, um, what were the hardest parts about running your participants or what would you do differently if you had to run a study again? Um, so maybe questions that aren't something that they can just answer. Cause I'm not going to ask them a question like how many people were in your study? Well, it's right there. <laughs> it's right there in the paper. I don't, you know, I don't have to re-ask that again. Or what did you want to know? It's right there in the purpose statement. It's in the <laughs> second paragraph. Um, so education podcasts are a little bit different because we're trying to, we're, we're trying to make, um, sometimes very dense information, a lot more palatable and break it apart different ways. So if you ha can have a mindset during an educational podcast of how can I just sort of pretend I don't quite know exactly what's going on and I can think about a wider variety of what my listenership might be and, and how those people might enjoy getting into the nuts and bolts of this partic particular um, research article or researcher. And the best job, the, the way that I know that I did a good job as an education interviewer on a podcast is if people listen to it and they, they're like, I didn't know that person had that paper, or I really enjoyed listening to that researcher and I had no idea that was one of the sides of them. 
Yeah, and a few examples of some education podcasts that exist now is Andrew's that he mentioned <laughs> earlier, but also instrumental and musical health. Um, it's funny that you bring up talking about interviews in your classes because I was actually first introduced to podcasts and interviews through a music therapy research class as well. We were asked to listen to some podcasts and write reflections and what we thought about um yeah <laughs> so the next type of podcast is discussions and they center more around a topic as opposed to um interviewing or understanding another person's um field of work or what they do and it's more of a group sharing ideas and experiences and opinions um, i listen to a lot of discussion podcasts when i um, was living out in texas and i was alone a lot of the time and i often felt um, connected to the hosts that were discussing whatever they were discussing. One of my favorites is um, Dax Shepard's Armchair Expert. And even though Dax is a super famous person, I still felt like I understood his sense of humor and like knew when he was about to crack a joke. <laughs> um, so because of that, I decided that I want did to create clinical populations around that model so that it would sound like again, as stated before, like you were at a coffee shop or at a bar in the living room with us and um, also that you were our friends. So um, Clinical Populations is one of the music therapy discussion podcasts, but also there is another one called Music Therapy Island. And their, I guess, whole theme is like music therapists aren't an island. So again, with the whole connectivity type piece. Um, where you're having discussions together. That was another one that I liked listening to. Those music therapy roundtable that was around. Oh yeah, for, yeah, for a yeah. Few years too. Yeah. And and but even now, like you talk about just being feeling like lonely in Texas mm -hmm. and having that kind of connection with it too. Like yeah, I'll still do that if I know that I've got a. I'm gonna work out. Or I'm gonna go for a run or something. I really I start scrolling the podcast and when I and I'm not looking for education when I'm running. <laughs> I'm looking for <laughs> the Dax Shepherd or I'm looking for the discussion podcast. Those are the ones that I want to listen to when I want to just dissociate from whatever thing I don't want to do, like uh, dishes or, <laughs> or laundry or running or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Mowing the yard, that's my like. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Two hours <laughs> of, of that. Um, <laughs> cool. So lastly, we've got storytelling. And I think this is very common for a lot of the people who maybe they've only heard of serial, right? Like uh, some of those big name podcasts, you know, the ones that get Casper mattresses to sponsor them and stuff like that. <laughs> Anything with Ira Glass involved with it. Yeah. This American Life. <laughs> yes. um, so there, there's a lot of dramatic elements and really the only one that we could think of that kind of fits into this for that I know of and that we're aware of is never mind who listens is a music therapy based creative podcast um, that really does kind of dive off into some interesting really kind of scripted discussions and stories and just takes you on a weird journey that you're you got to be like ready to sit down and be into I, I feel like it's not as easy to you know, passively mow the yard and do that. Whereas like on a drive, I could listen to all of the episodes of Dr. Death and, uh, enjoy that. So, um, but the thing is storytelling is weaved in all of these. So even when you're editing, and I know Gabby will talk about that later, even in an interview, there's an arc and in a discussion, there's an arc and, um, there's not too many podcasts that are literally just like random they just happen. They're storytelling. We're humans that crave that storytelling element, even if it's just a start, a middle, and an end. So um, with that, there's those elements not only of storytelling, but there's interview elements in the educational types, and there's 
discussion elements that may be interweaved and casualness that could be interweaved in different podcasts. So basically that kind of is like a catch all really. So, um, storytelling is one of those categories that if you haven't heard of that many podcasts, you might've heard of some of those very popular storytelling styles.